Hey everyone, today we're diving into melting metals using a plasma arc furnace. You already know about induction heaters, but what if I told you there's another more spectacular way to melt metals like aluminum or copper with a lightning hot plasma arc? And yes, you can build a simple 1 kilowatt plasma arc heater right at home. Let's get started. So what exactly is a plasma arc? It's an arc that harnesses the power of the fourth state of matter, plasma. It's a super hot electrically charged gas, like a miniature contained bolt of lightning. This isn't your average flame. It's a focused jet of ionized gas that we can direct with astonishing precision to melt even the most stubborn metals. And when I say superheated, I mean it. This plasma can reach mind-boggling temperatures up to 10,000 degrees Celsius. For perspective, the sun's surface is a cool 5,500 degrees. We're wielding a tool nearly twice as hot as the sun's surface right in the workshop. This extreme heat is the secret to its incredible efficiency. Why does that matter? The benefits are huge. First, speed. With this much heat, you melt metals significantly faster than traditional methods. Second, purity. Since it's an electric process using inert gas, there's no combustion, so no fuel impurities contaminate your melt. This results in a cleaner, higher quality product. And finally, control. You have pinpoint accuracy for precise temperature management, which is critical when working with sensitive alloys. The heart of the system is a high voltage electrical arc between two graphite electrodes. We pass an inert gas like argon through this arc and the intense energy ionizes it, creating the plasma stream. This plasma is then directed into a crucible which is also made from graphite that is perfect for this job. It's incredibly strong and can withstand extreme thermal shock without cracking. Your metal, whether it's titanium, steel or something more exotic, is placed inside this crucible. The plasma arc then transfers its immense energy directly to the metal, causing it to liquefy rapidly and uniformly. These big plasma arc furnaces are used worldwide to melt metals like titanium and aluminum alloys. They operate under a special gas atmosphere, typically argon or helium, to avoid metal contamination and control the process. The plasma torch creates a powerful, steady arc that heats the crucible and melts heavy batches of metal efficiently. Some industrial units can handle ingots weighing tons, but the same basic technology scales down to smaller lab or DIY models. So you want to harness the power of a miniature star in your own workshop. Remember that this is not a beginner's build. We're dealing with serious electricity and extreme temperatures. Now let's walk through the fundamental components of a small one kilowatt plasma arc furnace. First, the power source. You'll need a robust high voltage DC supply around one kilowatt because DC current provides a stable continuous arc for consistent heating. A common DIY route is to modify a Tegi welder as they're designed to deliver stable, controllable power to reliably start and maintain the arc. Next, the electrodes. You can't use just any metal, it would instantly melt. The go-to material is graphite with its incredibly high sublimation point of over 3600 degrees Celsius. You'll position two of these rods with their tips just a few millimeters apart. When the power is on, you carefully strike the arc, creating that brilliant, intensely hot plasma in the gap. Where do you put the metal? In the graphite crucible, thanks to its excellent thermal shock resistance, it's placed directly beneath the arc to catch all that intense energy. Containing this miniature sun is critical for safety and efficiency. You'll build a small insulated chamber around the setup using fire bricks. This enclosure protects you from the intense heat and blinding UV radiation. It also traps the heat, concentrating it on the crucible, which makes the melting process much faster. For the highest quality melts, control the atmosphere with an inert gas like argon or nitrogen. Flooding the chamber with argon pushes out oxygen, which prevents oxidation and impurities from ruining your metal. This results in a cleaner, stronger final product. While you can run it in open air, expect some oxidation and ensure exceptional ventilation. Finally, this project involves lethal voltages, extreme temperatures and intense UV radiation. You must wear a full welder's helmet, fire-resistant clothing and high temperature gloves. Ensure your workspace is clear of flammables and has a proper fire extinguisher.
All right, makers, if you've ever wondered which one is the reigning champion between high voltage plasma heater and induction heater, you're in the right place. We're going to break down everything you need to know. Let's get into it. First up, let's talk about raw heat. This is where plasma arc heating truly shines. And I mean that literally. Plasma, an ionized state of matter, can reach an astonishing 10,000 degrees Celsius. This incredible temperature allows it to melt virtually anything, including highly refractory materials like tungsten and titanium. On the other side, induction furnaces are no slouches, typically reaching up to a very respectable 3000 degrees Celsius. This is more than enough for most common metals like steel, copper and gold. But for the most extreme applications, plasma takes the crown. That massive temperature difference leads directly to our next point melting speed. With its concentrated sun-hot jet of energy, a plasma arc furnace delivers incredibly fast melts. It transfers heat directly and aggressively, making quick work of even large amounts of material. Induction heating is inherently slower at the same power level. It works by inducing electrical currents inside the metal itself, causing it to heat from the inside out. It's a more gradual and gentle process. But what about control? When it comes to precision and purity, plasma arc technology is in a class of its own. Because it often operates in an inert gas atmosphere, it prevents the molten metal from reacting with oxygen. This results in an exceptionally clean, high purity melt, which is critical for aerospace or medical grade alloys. Induction, however, offers a different kind of precision, repeatability. The magnetic field can be precisely shaped and controlled, making it perfect for automated processes where you need to heat thousands of parts to the exact same temperature every single time. While the electromagnetic stirring effect can sometimes introduce impurities. Now, let's look at control. Plasma arc technology is significantly more complex, requiring high voltage DC power, specialized electrodes that wear out and a constant supply of inert gas. It's a sophisticated setup with many moving parts. Induction furnaces, by contrast, are elegantly simple. They consist of a power supply and a copper coil. The electronics can be complex, but the overall system is more straightforward, especially for DIY projects. Plasma arc systems require more expensive initial equipment. The running costs also add up, as you constantly need to purchase consumable electrodes and refill your inert gas tanks. Induction furnaces are generally cheaper to buy or build, and their primary running cost is just electricity. In fact, induction is often more energy efficient as the heat is generated directly within the metal, leading to less wasted energy. Let's talk about maintenance. Plasma systems are more demanding. The electrodes are a consumable item that wear down over time and requiring regular replacement. You also have to monitor the gas delivery system and cooling lines. Induction systems are far more robust in this regard. The work coil, typically made of copper tubing, is incredibly durable and can last for a very long time with minimal care. What about portability? You can find handheld induction units used by auto mechanics and compact benchtop models are a favorite of jewelers and small scale casters. While you can build a somewhat portable DIY plasma arc furnace, you'll still be tethered to a bulky gas tank. And on an industrial scale, plasma furnaces are massive stationary installations. So, after all that, which one is right for you? There's no single winner, it's all about choosing the right tool for the job. Plasma Arc is the undisputed king of high temperature, high speed, high purity applications. If you need to melt tungsten, conduct advanced materials research or process tons of metal quickly and you have the budget and infrastructure, plasma is your champion. Induction heating is the versatile, efficient and accessible workhorse. It's perfect for most common metals, offers fantastic repeatable control and is more affordable and easier to maintain. It's the go-to for workshops, small foundries, heat treating and countless other tasks. Quick construction tips. 1. Get carbon or graphite rods as electrodes from suppliers. 2. Use a graphite crucible sized for your metal piece. 3. Modify a DC power supply or use a small welder power unit. 4. Build or buy a small fire brick chamber with holes for electrodes. 5. Connect electrodes safely. Insulate high voltage wiring well. 6. 
For metal melting, keep metal pieces small, about few grams to tens of grams. Here's a question for you. What is the primary gas used in plasma arc melting to prevent contamination of metals? Think about it and share your answer below.